Greetings fellow Rotarians and guests. My name is Joe Young and it's my honor to serve as the 2020-2021 President of the Rotary Club of Columbus. Founded in 1915 with our first meeting in February of 1916, our club is one of the oldest and largest within Rotary International. Our membership includes a diverse set of leaders within business, city government, military affairs, health care, education, arts and culture, social services, and ministry, all sharing a common desire to improve our community and have a positive impact on the world around us. We started this Rotary year in the midst of the worst health care crisis the world has seen in over a hundred years. The COVID-19 pandemic has dramatically changed the way we live, work, and interact with each other. Rotary, just like all other aspects of our society, has had to adapt. We've got our Rotary masks and we've had to change our meeting format to virtual since the pandemic restricts our ability to gather together in person in large groups. We now find ourselves in the year 2021 and the pandemic is still the daily dominant force in our lives. But there's hope on the horizon that's resulting from effective vaccines and the ongoing heroic efforts of our frontline healthcare workers. Our nation, while the healthcare crisis is still brewing, is still struggling with education and food insecurity amongst our most vulnerable populations. In addition, we still struggle with political division and social injustice. These problems aren't going away anytime soon, but Rotary remains well positioned to be part of the solution. On behalf of my wife Vicki and our daughters Katie and Lynn, I want to thank you for all that you are doing to make our community a better place to live. It's my pleasure to serve alongside you. Now let's get to work. Greetings and welcome to the February 3rd meeting of the Rotary Club of Columbus. So glad that you've joined us today and hope that all of you are healthy and happy. As we start today's meeting, we want to extend our condolences to the family of Rotarian Riley Stansel, who, who passed away last week. Riley was a member of our club for 57 years and had, had been battling health issues for, for a while. And he, he died while with family in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. May his memory be a blessing. Our pledge today is brought to us by Claire Gordon, daughter of Rotarian Jim Gordon. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for leading the pledge for us, Claire. Our club has a long-standing tradition of honoring active duty military personnel each week in our meeting. And with today's introduction, I wanna call on Rotarian Andy Redman. President Joe, fellow Rotarians, it's my honor to introduce Sergeant First Class Joshua Golson. Sergeant Golson is an infantryman here at Fort Benning in the 198th Infantry Brigade, doing uh, operations headquarters work uh, translating guidance from the Maneuver Center of Excellence staff down into the uh, brigades that are part of the 198. Sergeant Golson's deployed twice, once to Iraq, once to Afghanistan. He's graduate of the Air Assault School, Airborne School, Senior Leaders course, multiple other courses uh, subsequent to his rank. His awards and decorations include the Army Commendation Medal with four Oak Leaf Clusters, the Achievement Medal with two Oak Leaf Clusters, and again, all of the awards and decorations that you would associate with combat deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. Sergeant Golson is from, originally from, uh, or grew up in Scorpio, Indiana, Southern Indiana, joined the Army in 2008. He's married to Rachel. They have one son, five-year-old Lucas. They live here on post at Fort Benning. And this summer, he's headed back to Fort Campbell uh, for his follow-on assignment. So Sergeant Golson, it's an honor to have you here. I'm going to give you a couple of things. Number one is a rotary challenge coin. You know what to do with that. And then I'll give you a passport to the arts. Um, hopefully you and Rachel can take advantage of this before you get out of here when some of these places open back up uh, post-COVID. But it's two tickets to the River Center, to the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, Columbus State University Theater, the Springer Opera House, 
in our attractions here at the Infantry Museum, the simulators, the theater. We hope to see you back soon. So thank you for your service. And please pass that back to all the soldiers on Fort Benning. We appreciate what they do. So thank you very much. You. Floor is yours. I uh, just want to say thank you very much. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. Sergeant First Class Golson, on behalf of our club members, we want to extend our thanks to you and to all the men and women that, that serve alongside you there at Fort Benning. Thank you so much for your, your service and sacrifice for our country and our community. Um, over the past couple of weeks, our club has had an opportunity to uh, deliver some some good cheer, some morale boosting lunches to some of the workers um, on the front lines uh, in our healthcare community, helping us get through the COVID pandemic. I would now wanna show you a video of a delivery that took place last week with workers at Piedmont Columbus Regional. Hi, I'm Joe Young. I'm president of the Rotary Club of Columbus. I'm so proud to be here with other Rotarians today at Piedmont Columbus Regional delivering lunches to some of the healthcare workers in our community. We're so appreciative of all their efforts. We know it's been challenging. We know we're still not where we need to be. And we just want to encourage everybody and do whatever we can to offer our support and let them know how much they are appreciated. Again, we just want to thank all the frontline workers in our community, those serving within health care, those in the grocery stores, in the restaurants, our teachers, our first responders. There are so many folks that are making a positive impact to help our community get through this pandemic. I and other members of the Rotary Club of Columbus are just so happy to be in a position to help out wherever we can and just want you guys to know how much we appreciate you. We're all in this together. Our club continues to deliver lunches to frontline healthcare workers. Um, this week, uh, we are distributing lunches to workers through the health department. Um, they've, they've got their, their vaccination uh, drive-through area there off of uh, Veterans Parkway. And uh, we're, we're happy to be in a position to, to be able to provide that morale boost to folks that are working so hard to take care of us here in the community. Uh, February is Black History Month. Uh, to acknowledge this, the United Way recently recognized several members of our African American community that are having a positive impact here, here in Columbus and the region. And pleased to see that we had uh, several members of our club on that list. I want to uh, recognize Adrian Chester, Rodney Close, Belva Dorsey, Isaiah Hughley. Lisa Smith, as well as Jeremy Ackles, uh, past president of the Rotaract Club of, of Columbus. Thank you guys so much for all you're doing in the community and, and, and thanks to everyone um, for, for having a, a positive impact in, in the community here. Um, our club turned 105 uh, this week. So, so happy birthday to the Rotary Club of Columbus. Uh, our charter was granted uh, from Rotary International on February the 1st of 1916. So we organized as a club in, in November of the previous year, 1915, but the charter was granted February 1st of 1916. So ha happy 105th birthday, everybody, and uh, many thanks to, to all of those that, that went before us. We, we stand on the shoulders of giants as, as we perpetuate that legacy. Our next lunch meeting option is currently scheduled for February the 17th, so two weeks from today. Uh, the board will continue to monitor uh, local COVID developments and let you know if anything changes. But as of right now, February 16th is the next day that we'll have an opportunity to potentially gather in person. Uh, 
sorry, Fe February 17th. Uh, the health department has a need for volunteers uh, to help in their call center. So for those of you that are interested in serving in that capacity, please contact the office. Uh, also, the month of February, we've got two projects going on. We've got our book drive um, for uh, children's books. If you've got new or gently used children's books that you'd like to donate, uh, please contact Carol Ridley. Uh, when we get back to our in-person meetings, there will be drop-off boxes here in the, in the club, or you can drop them off at the Teen Challenge office. Also in the month of February, we're going to start our Feeding the Valley District Grant Project. We're going to be packing up boxes that will be delivered out into the community through Feeding the Valley's mobile pantry unit. Uh, Andy Redmond is leading that project for us, and we, we want to have volunteers from our club, and we're also going to be partnering up with Muskogee Rotary and North Columbus Rotary to make it a, a full community-wide effort, so really looking forward to that. To introduce our program today, it's now my pleasure to call on Rotarian Ian Bond. Well, thank you, uh, President Joe, um, and good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Uh, it's always a pleasure this time of year to introduce our uh, annual GRSP uh, update program. And just before uh, I bring Ken on, I just want to recognize a very special guest who is joining us on the live feed on Facebook, and that is Catherine Fields from the Rotary Club of Griffin Dawnbreakers. And Catherine has recently accepted the position of uh, the inaugural Georgia Rotary Student Program Marketing and Development Director. So welcome, Catherine, and uh, uh, please, Rotarians, go ahead and say hi to Catherine if you're putting comments on the comment feed on the uh, Facebook page. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Ken Townsend from the Rotary Club of North Columbus. And uh, Ken, uh, together with uh, our own past president, Tyler Townsend, uh, work at Townsend Wealth Management uh, right here in Columbus. Uh, Ken is well known to all of us, and sometimes we feel like uh, he is actually a member of our club. We see him so much, and we love you so much, Ken. Thank you for all that you do for the students and the clubs in our area to support the Georgia Rotary Student Program. So. Uh, without further ado, let's welcome Ken Townsend. Thank you, Ian. I really appreciate those kind words. I also appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today about the Georgia Rotary Student Program, GRSP. And the origin of that program was an individual Rotarian in Thomasville, Georgia, in 1946 just shortly after World War II. This Rotarian named Will Watt had an idea about peace following that tragic war. His idea involved having young college-age students from around the world come to Georgia, come to Georgia to share values and uh, cultural experiences with other GRSP students, with Rotarians, with classmates in the colleges they attend, and with other United States citizens. So his idea was building peace through understanding. So the mission that he envisioned was world peace through understanding, and that remains the mission of GRSP today. Now, we are in the midst of an unusual year. It's never happened uh, before in the GRSP experience. We have no students this year. It's, it's been a void. I think we've all missed that. So what I'm going to do today uh, is talk about the last year that we had students, which was from August 2019, scheduled through May 2020. Actually, it didn't finish as we scheduled it with the pan pandemic. The uh, kids had to go home early. But at the start, one of the things we do, and let me get my program up.
is meet the kids at the Atlanta airport. This is a big deal for us. We will have, uh, and with the kids who came in, we had met and talked to them, the host family. So you see on the right, Mac and Rachel Plummer and their student, Michaela, and on the left, Janice and I happened to be the host family and uh, with Elon, our student, uh, between us. And then we have uh, Ian in the background. He was nice enough to come out to join in our little welcoming celebration. This is uh, an exciting time uh, because after having Z talked on the phone with them on the internet, we finally met our students in person. And they're both, they both were from Sweden. And we, we really uh, were happy to see them come on, in on the same flight and we had a nice reception for them. So after that reception, um, we have about a week where the students visit the home of the host family. And that was the case with these two young ladies. Uh, we, that gives us a chance to bond with them. And uh, it was a nice way for them to adjust and start learning about the United States. But, after that, we have one of the big occasions uh, for the GRSP program. And this again is uh, uh, Mac and Rachel with Michaela and uh, Ian in the background. But we have the conclave. The conclave is a gathering of the students. Uh, most of the trustees come, some of the host families come, but it's an opportunity for the students to meet each other initially, to get some orientation into the United States. We have courses for them, including a judge talking to them about the legal system in the United States and the importance of avoiding certain things like underage drinking. Uh, so they get that orientation. But the main thing that occurs in the conclave is they start to get to know and to bond with the other students. So one of the things that we do in Conclave is we give the kids a chance. They only have a couple of hours to form groups and design and practice skits that make up a cabaret we have Saturday evening. So it's, a, it's always fun. Uh, the student population is filled with talent. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So in this picture, you might be able to see Michaela and Elon uh, on the left part of the picture. So after that, then they go back. They already have just moved into their dorms and they start classes. It's, uh, it's an exciting time for the kids. They're learning and they're very, very busy. But then Labor Day comes and there's usually relaxation. Mac and Rachel have Michaela and a, a United States friend that, that uh, Michaela had met along with some of Mac's uh, family. And I, I do have to thank Mac and Rachel for digging out pictures for this presentation. Uh, it was very helpful. And here are Michaela and her, her friend enjoying the lake. And Mac and Rachel with Michaela uh, having a meal. And that probably was up near uh, their place at Lake Harding. And then this is our family with Elon. Elon is on the right side, your right side of the table, the third person in. Uh, Tyler and his family are there, and Janice's sister and husband are there. And Elon, at this point in time, was fully engaged with the family. And she was enjoying a low country boil. It's a different type dish than she had in Sweden but she enjoyed it. And here's Michaela and Elon at a Georgia Tech basketball game with the mascot, Buzz. 
So we enjoyed having them up for that, and they, they enjoyed meeting Buzz. We encouraged the students on two extended holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, to spend some time with the host families. Students love to travel, so they have a long break, especially at Christmas, between the end of the first semester and the second semester. So we were lucky enough to get about a week with Elon visiting us between trips. They travel together and, and they uh, really enjoy it and have fun. But it is very nice for them to share in uh, your Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, holidays. And we enjoyed that, as did uh, Mac and Rachel. Now here, during the holidays, Michaela came over to our house and they're baking cookies. And they're with Avery and Laney, Janice and my uh, granddaughters. And uh, that was a very nice visit that Michaela had to our house. And here is Elon with my, our two grandchildren. And here's Mac and Rachel with their family and Michaela. And having a nice holiday meal. And this is Michaela with three of Rachel and Mac's grandchildren. They're playing some type of game. I see the Santa Claus. Uh, indication. And then Elon visited uh, the plumber's home to uh, do some cooking with Michaela. And I cannot pronounce the name of what they cook. Mike tried to send me a pronunciation, but uh, it was cinnamon buns in our language. Now, this is Lainey, our, our granddaughter, and Elin, and it happened that Lainey was on her one week of grandmother's count, the week that Elin spent with us. So they got to be very, very close buddies. And the reason for that is it was a fairly stressful week for Elin. You would think she would be relaxing and getting to know us, but she had a major decision to make, and that was whether to audition for the Schwab Singers. It's a choral group at the Schwab School of Music that is nationally renowned. In fact, it was scheduled to um, have a performance at Carnegie Hall in New York City in May of the following year. So that was one of the incentives for Elon in trying to reach this decision. But what was interesting is she spent more time talking to Laney about that decision than Janice and, and me. So uh, Laney finally gave her her final recommendation. She, Elon went to bed, got up early, talked to her mother. She came up for breakfast the next morning and said, my mother said the same thing Laney said, so I'm going to do it. And uh, so that was an interesting period. Then Elin did go on to audition. She got a call back for another audition, and she did make the uh, choral group, and they had a number of very good concerts that we were able to attend. But it was a disappointment that uh, they were not able to perform at Carnegie Hall, which had closed by the time they were scheduled to perform. Now, Michaela had a visitor come to see her, a very good friend of hers from Sweden named Matilda. And I think this is a shot of uh, her arrival in uh, Atlanta at the airport. Then this shot is of Matilda in a dinner that Mac and Rachel arranged to have have uh, Matilda meet two students, music students from the school, school, Schwab School. They are international students, and they had a very nice time getting to know Matilda. This picture is not the greatest, but it's the only one I had of a visitor that Elin had. She had her father and mother come, and her father 
is a minister, a pastor at a church in Sweden. He uh, was a very valuable person to get to know. He is interesting. He has very firm ideas, and they are expressed fairly succinctly. <laughs> so, uh, but he's conservative, too. Uh, it was enjoyable to have them visit. And then there was Jesper. Jesper is Elon's boyfriend, and it happened that he was coming to the United States about the time Elon came in, August of 2019, and he was uh, signed to play hockey for a team in Florida, Fort Myers, Florida, the Florida Eels. And the league that he was playing in has young people from around the world come together who are skilled uh, hockey players, and they compete for an opportunity to get a scholarship at a United States school or maybe even immediately turn professional. But Jesper's idea was he wanted to earn a scholarship in the United States playing hockey. hockey. He was a goalie and a very talented goalie. And in fact, he did get awarded a four-year full-cost scholarship to Adrian College. But like many things this year, the pandemic cut that short. He went home early, and uh, he decided to start university in Sweden. He may or may not get back maybe for a year in the United States. This is Jesper and Elon. Uh, at the match, doing a pause in the match. Now, Jesper was only in, in Columbus one time over Thanksgiving, and then we went to Atlanta to watch this hockey match. Uh, the Florida team was playing the Atlanta team. This is a time that we were out to dinner with Elon, 11th and Bay, and it was well before the pandemic and a beautiful evening, and we, we had dinner on the uh, porch there, and very enjoyable. And Ellen, over the holidays, cooking. Ellen was a good cook, and she liked to cook. This is Michaela at one of our historic sites, the Pemberton, Pemberton Co uh, Cottage. And then what happened initially was the students with the pandemic starting, finally got to the point where they were asked to leave the dormitories. And so that meant Michaela went to stay with the plumbers and uh, Elon came to stay with us. And it was a time where we really became uh, closely involved with, with the students because there were a few weeks that we were together and not going out. and. Uh, Janice and Elon got to be very good partners at watching net Netflix. We even signed up for a trial with Apple TV so they could watch the morning show. And it was a fun, fun time. But then the students were worried about whether they would get flights on. So Michaela left. And then a few days later, uh, Elon left to go back to Sweden there. The cutting the year off like that means they don't get to have the long goodbye with the students. I've been through many of those waiting for our students to drive back home after the uh, district conference. And it's a emotional time for them and a great time. And I hated that the students had to go back without that happening. But uh, they have managed to get together. Uh, I know that uh, Elon uh, was part of a group of Swedish students that had a reunion uh, just recently. So th during this time, uh, Michaela was doing cooking for the plumbers during that time, and uh, oops, and Elon. Uh, cooked frequently for us. Her Swedish pasta dishes were fantastic, uh, and we really enjoyed it. But then the, the, the year was over. 
Now in the uh, discussions I've shown you here, uh, this is more of the fun part of being with host families. The actual interaction is not shown um, in the pictures that I've shown so far. So I did want to mention one thing that I think highlights what Will Watt had in mind for the GRSP program. And this came out of a, a series of videos that my predecessor, Tony Wright, had the students do. And one young lady from Germany who happened to be my first uh, student that I hosted, Elon was the second, we've only hosted twice, but about seven years ago, a young German stu student, Jana Sievers, in that video, and we still have the video, and Tony and I have talked a couple of times about uh, what she said, and I'd like to, to just repeat as nearly as I can. It's not absolutely verbatim, but it's, it's the idea. And what she said in that video was, we may pray to different gods. Okay, so just think about that. We may pray to different gods, but with patience and understanding, we can be friends. She made that statement, and that reflects, I think, world peace through understanding and what Will Watt intended to uh, build, and it still exists today. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Barbara Smith. She's your GRSP leader at your club, and she's going to talk a little bit about the GRSP endowment and how important it is to the program and how important it is to your club. So, Barbara? Thank you, Ken. And to start off, as uh, I've been asked to talk about the endowment fund and how we support GRSP students. However, I just want to start out to let y'all know this is a very near and dear um, um, uh, program that I have loved in uh, so many years. I got involved when Ian e. Bond called me to his office in probably 2006 and was talking about the GRSP program and I was absolutely clueless as to what he was asking me to do. But over the years, by trial and error, we have learned that fundraising and trying to encourage people to be a part of this program and supporting our students so we, we can do this going forward for years and years. Um, Ken asked me to speak to you today about the, as the GRSP chairperson for our club and to speak on the GRSP endowment fund support of a GRSP student. And as you can see on the screen that the total expenses for the year at Columbus State University for tuition and board is $17,772 for this year. Um, however, the uh, GRSP endowment support uh, allots $6,000 uh, to every club or clubs that are supporting a student. And um, so that that's, helps with defraying the cost of the total expense. Um, during the year, we get a rebate, and how we get that rebate is based upon the donations of the prior year. Um, we must average $50 per member per year of donations to qualify for this rebate. So as you know, I've come around and asked people to be a um, supporter um, of, this of this program, and it's just very important that we know that Support. It's it's twenty five dollars per quarter that you can donate to uh, this uh, endowment, and it's billed to you uh, every quarter uh, from our club. And uh, once we get to that point, we we have a certain amount that we can get every year. And right now, I believe last year, or I estimated when this year is that we're gonna get five thousand two hundred seventy three dollars is estimated. 
for this year, and hopefully we'll get to that um, by the end of this this year. Um, so that leaves our support from our club at six thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars. Um, however, this year we've had a decrease in our sustaining members due to the pandemic situation. And uh, just encourage y'all to think about being a supporter and knowing how very important it is that uh, we get this rebate uh, to help defray the cost. Um, this is the power of the GRSP Endowment Fund. And having said that, we, our club, uh, are encouraging the members and to commit the $25 per quarter to the Will What Foundation. Um, it is our hope that you will contact Julie at our club uh, or let me know uh, that you would like to contribute quarterly or annually to the fund. And we, you know, these donations will ensure the future of our students long after we're gone. And, and how better way to support somebody from across the world than having them be a part of this program. They're such intelligent students, such wonderful uh, young people. And I have just had the privilege of being a, a uh, host parent back in um, 2000, excuse me, 2012 uh, to Tammy Hydrahita from Colombia, South America. And it was an experience that I'll never forget and want to continue uh, for many years to come. I thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Barbara. And now I'm, uh, I understand that Cam is going to have some questions for us. Barbara? Yes. Hi, Ken. How are you? Good. I can't get it. <laughs> well, it's great to see you we'll both. And... That. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's always <laughs> encouraging to, uh, to hear about the GRSP program and, and undoubtedly so many lives of young people have been touched. And, and I think the, the blessing really flows both ways in this program because the host families and the many Rotarians that have gotten to know these students over the years have really had their lives enriched and uh, have enjoyed uh, everything we've learned from our students, not, not just what they've learned from, from us and mm -hmm. from spending their time in Columbus and at CSU. Um, one question that we have that's been posted uh, is, um, how are the students selected for the program? Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, the, the students are recruited, and the countries who've been uh, having students have a process that recruits students in the uh, high schools. We get information, a profile on them, and the clubs individually can look, do look at the book. There'll be 50 or 60 students and make a choice. Now, this year, it was a little different because we canceled the program last year, and students were given the opportunity to come based on their acceptance in the canceled year. And the student for your club will be a student that had accepted and was being processed the last year before it was canceled. So uh, that student from Scotland will come this year. And that's very good. We're going to have the same host family and Barbara. So the three of us work to uh, sort this out with her, and she will be coming. We're excited. Now, that, that's, uh, so the typical, though, is all of the students are selected through that program. Now, there's a new program, Cam, if I've got a minute to tell you, and I won't go into mm -hmm. details on it, but it's called an alternative selection program. We did call it the pilot plan, pilot plan program before Dunwoody piloted it with Oglethorpe University, and it's aimed at diversifying the countries who provide GRSP students. So I think the student last year that we had a student, which was year before, you know, it was the same year as these Swedish students, was from Ethiopia, what wasn't she? Uh, but the, the idea mm -hmm. is get yeah. some new countries involved. And so there's a special way to work with uh, 
universities to finance it at a lower cost. I won't go into the details now, uh, but just to give you uh, some information, that is being worked in some places and areas. Fantastic. How how many? Uh, what what are how many different uh, countries do we currently draw from in the program? You know, I don't have that figure, Cam. Uh, but we draw regularly from the Western European countries and the mm -hmm. South American. Uh, we draw very few outside of that. Okay. So uh, there are quite a few countries, but they're concentrated. Gotcha. Here Barbara, will this be the first time you've uh, been a host? Uh... You're talking to who? Well, I was a host back in 2000. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, what, what are... And yes, back in 2012. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess a question for both of you would be, what what would be what would one of the most memorable uh, experiences that has come from being a, a host? Well, I know what Barbara. Well, I think it is. <laughs> well, I think when I became the host parent, uh, I am. Um, became so involved with her and her family and they came to visit with us. And I think that experience was very important, having her family here um, meeting us and staying with us and experiencing our culture as well. Um, and the continuous contact we have with these students, because I'm a part of these students, every one of them, every year. And mm -hmm. to ensure that their host family uh, is doing what they're supposed to do and make sure they're happy, you know, and, and they follow the procedure of what they're supposed to be responsible for. And so I'm continuously involved with every student. So I can consider them all my, my students as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and being able to visit their country too. We've been able to do that several times. Um, mm -hmm. I went to uh, Columbia, I went to Sweden, uh, excuse me, to um, Scotland and got to see several of the students there. So that, that was fun. Yeah, and for me, Cam, uh, I had two visits, one with Barbara to Columbia and one to uh, Germany to see my first student. And those were the most meaningful experiences I had to actually go into their country and mm -hmm. meet their families yeah, and, yeah. and share their, their local culture. Yeah. Well, here's another question. What and this is a specific figure, if, if we know it, but what is the approximate ratio of men to women participating in, in the GRSP program? <laughs> I would say, you know, and this is without having any facts, just observation, that it may be, uh, and it's gotten a little better, I think, with the men, but maybe 35, 65, something like that, uh, with the men being the lower figure. Right. Maybe a third. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure that um, the diversification of the country sounds like uh, a really exciting new chapter for the program. I uh, think certainly. So. Yeah. And um, I, I mean, I can I can remember so many of the wonderful students that have come through, and they really brighten up the the day the the grsp program each year where the student shares their story in the beginning and then towards the end of their experience i feel are always very moving uh valuable and enriching for for all of us and uh it's it's exciting to see the program continue to thrive can i can i ask the question how could columbus uh or, or rotary club of columbus members or rotarians uh, continue to make investments in that endowment uh, fund uh, so that the the annual gap that the Columbus Rotary Club is responsible for can can diminish over time. Well, I think that uh, Barbara's suggestion that uh, members consider being sustaining contributors to the Will Watt um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, endowment fund. And as Barbara said, uh, sustaining members are $25 a quarter or $100 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that would be wonderful if we could get more and more people 
at all of our clubs. I look at all of our clubs in this terms, but uh, that that would be wonderful to have more clubs achieve that fifty dollars per member. Yeah, and so do members simply email Barbara or email Julie or that they can email either one of those two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody knows exactly how to become a sustainer. Um, and that is such an important, an important program. So yes, it is. Uh, see. All right. Well, we're getting we're right at one o'clock. So I just want to thank you both again for your service to this program and your service to the Rotary Club. Uh, it is so meaningful. And uh, we just appreciate your leadership and all the lives that you've that you've changed over the years to your involvement in this program. So President Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank, thank you so much, uh, Ken and Barbara. Uh, we, we appreciate so much you, you sharing uh, your time with us today, talking through this incredible program, this incredible initiative uh, with, within our club and within the state of Georgia. Um, it's our custom, uh, Ken, I know Barbara's aware of this, Ken, I think you're aware of this too, that we donate mm -hmm. a children's book to the Columbus Public Library in honor of our, our guest speaker. So we're happy to donate a book that will be inscribed with both of your names um, as a result of your, your presenting to us today. So we, we appreciate you guys, all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I want to remind everybody that's, that's tuning in that a replay of today's call will be available immediately following the live broadcast on Facebook and then a YouTube link will be sent out from the office uh, later on. Our program next week, uh, we're going to have Bindi Lossage as a representative of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, she's going to be talking about their initiatives and partnerships with Rotary, so really excited about that. Uh, and we go our separate ways. Please continue to uh, wear your mask as you, you're moving about out in the community. Please continue to offer love and encouragement to each other. Let's get to work.